Hey there, it's Ike with Big Tech Sornets. I have Jordan from Badger here today, and he is gonna show us how to properly mount a C1 mount um, to, your, to your gun, and then also how to mount the scope um, inside the mount. So Jordan, I'll let you take it away and show awesome. us how it's done. Thanks. Hey guys, it's Jordan Gerber here with Badger Ordnance. Uh, we're at Big Tech's Ordnance's uh, facility, and today we're gonna talk about how to properly mount a Condition 1 modular mount onto your receiver, and then how to mount a scope into that mount. So, this is our preferred method. Uh, we like to use the dead level. This is our critical leveling device. So our ideology is to level the scope in relation to earth uh, via using your reticle and a plumb bob or a known level position. You don't have to do it that way and we'll discuss other ways you can do it, but that's what we're gonna use today. So first thing you wanna do is take your mount and mount it to the rail, making sure that you've got those clamp feet actually sitting uh, on the, the right side on the rail and then indexing those recoil lugs all the way forward on the scope rail. So you can go ahead and mount those finger tight. And then now we will torque these down to our torque spec, which is 65 inch pounds. If you have a question what those torque specs are, really handy, they're laser engraved right here on the top of the mount. So we will do that first. And what I like to do is incrementally torque both of these. You don't wanna go straight down to 65. I like to incrementally torque them until I reach that torque spec. I just did there and then same thing to the other one and the reason why you want to actually torque these down is you want to replicate exactly how you're gonna have this mounted on your gun so now we're at 65 inch pounds now we're gonna put the scope in the mount this version here we're gonna be using our uh, accessory ring cap our modular system on here so I'm gonna go ahead and put the underring on this scope and just kind of get it positioned where I think it might go. And then now we're gonna put the scope in the mount itself. So you need to be somewhat cognizant of where you think your eye relief is gonna be. Um, this might be a not a known thing right off the bat. If you've got experience with other scopes, you can kind of set it where you normally see it. But you don't wanna just slap it in there um, and not know where you think you're gonna need it before you start torquing it down. So we'll get this cap on here this cap on here and I'm going to just very loosely finger tight start screwing in um, some of these these uh, screws so some of our mounts uh, if you get them you might be familiar with this some of them will have numbers on the caps um, for those of you that have issued these you're gonna see that um, those of you that aren't issued these, you probably won't see the numbers, but that's okay. We've got that in the manual and we can show you how to do that or just do it in a star pattern, just like you would your lug nuts on your truck. So nothing too mind blowing when it comes down to um, turn screws. Get that just kind of finger tight. Get the under ring here started. And our screws on all the uh, C1 modular mounts, whether it's the standard C1 like you see here or the C1 Max, our screws all have a blue nylock patch on there. So you do not need to use Loctite. It's, we already have got that done for you. We already got it on here. Um, you don't need to apply any of that on there. Okay. So now our ring caps are somewhat finger tight. You can see I can still easily move that scope within the mount, uh, but it's not flopping off. So what I like to do from here, you can see how easy this is to move. If you try to just torque it straight like this with it being that easy, you're gonna have the scope want to can't when you go to torque down these scope rings. So what I like to do, kind of a little tip for that, is I wanna look at these scope caps and I wanna have a nice even gap on the ring cap and the mountain body, but I wanna 
tighten it down just enough, making sure I keep an equal gap. But I want to tighten it down just enough to where it's not so loose that the scope wants to move around on you every time you go to turn a screw, but it's not too tight to where you can't move the scope. And what I do to uh, kind of figure out how tight that needs to be before I start actually torquing down is I just get these screws down enough to not want to freely turn anymore. Just get finger tight. So we've got it somewhat tight on there. It's not as loose as it was, but I want to have enough pressure on there to where to move it inside the mount. I basically have to grab the ocular and the objective and just apply a little bit of pressure. It's a little too much, but you just want a little bit of pressure to be able to move the scope inside the mount. And that will just help you being able to uh, torque this down and keep them from shifting on you. So, so we've got that right about there where it needs to be. Now, if you're using a dead level, the next step you wanna do is go ahead and level your dead level. Now on this side, on my end, I have a bubble level with a ring uh, on the bubble level and a bubble that I get straight centered in that ring. And the reason why we prefer this method is what are you leveling to? How do you know what you're starting off with is actually level? Um, there's different trains of thought and different ways you can do it. If you can get your gun or your scope rail level, you can do that. Um, that's just a little bit harder to fixture. Uh, so we like using this little handy tool. It's inexpensive. You can use it with any scope. You can use it with any mount. You don't have to use our mount. Um, if you've got something else, uh, you know, hunting rings or something else from another preferred manufacturer, it doesn't have to be a Bad Jordan's product. You can use any other product. Um, today we're doing it that way. So we've got that bubble level level. So from here, there's a few different things you can do. Some uh, guys like a hastier method uh, where they take the turret cap off and they put a bubble level on top of the turret cap um, and then they move the scope to there. That's fine. Um, what we like to do is we like to then set a plumb bob or a known level marking that we have in the distance up and then we will get behind the scope itself and we will focus that on that line and we will turn the reticle itself uh, even until it matches up exactly with that plumb level line. Our train of thought is a scope like this here, it's a long range precision rifle optic um, that utilizes a reticle that uses holds. So if you're gonna be using those holds and that's your primary engagement method, we wanna make sure those that actual etch reticle is zero to the earth. So that's what we like to do. What we're gonna do here today for expediency is we're gonna actually use this leveling line. Um, there's one on both sides on this uh, Leupold Mark V. And we have inside the, inside the C1, precision cut leveling marks. And what those do is we don't use the split of the cap because if you use the split of the cap, you use the bottom of the split, the middle of the split. It's, it's harder to know we make precision cut lines on all C1 mounts, front and back, left and right and then you can use that to line up this laser marking. So that's what we're gonna to do today for expediency. So, I've got that pretty much there. So, that's good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our torque wrench here. Today we're using a fix-it stick and going to use it with a 20 inch pound torque driver. This one's adjustable. You can use an adjustable one. You can use one set in it. Whatever your preferred torque wrench is, it's fine. Just 20 inch pounds on all these T15s. That's what we're going to go to today. So we will start, we're gonna start with this first one here, going in a star pattern, and we're going to incrementally torque it. So you don't wanna go straight to 20 inch pounds right off. If you do that, you could have a scenario where this wants to can off. So it's incremental torque, just like you would your truck. Doing that or and I'm just putting just a little bit of torque on here about eight inch pounds Nothing crazy and we're gonna go and do that to the rear on that star pattern 
and I'm gonna do this maybe two or three times to get to that 20 inch pounds, whatever it takes to uh, incrementally torque these. So you might need to go on your optic, maybe two, three passes, just for expediency. We're just gonna do a few here. And you wanna ensure if you're using the dead level, um, that you know you don't be so aggressive with it that you're moving it around and then finally we're gonna torque our undering here okay so now we're at torque we've got it to the uh, 20 inch pounds for all the caps so we just want to check and make sure that our gaps are equal on the ring gaps on all sides so between those whole sides that looks good. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna mount this on a rifle where we kind of know we need eye relief and then check it for eye relief. If you don't have eye relief, you can move it on the slots for fore aft, whatever you need to do. And if you still can't get proper eye relief, hey, no problem. Right back onto your dead level, move the scope forward or back and rehash it. Just make sure you get all that set up before you start go shooting. That's how you mount a C1.